Welcome to this year's Freedom of Speech Award. I'm Javier Arguedas. I hope you didn't miss me too much <laughs> since I have been here for a while. Um, but I'm very honored and very privileged to be able to present um, this uh, event tonight. This ceremony has become one of the most important highlights of the Global Media Forum. Each year, we come together to honor those who, through hard work, have shown an outstanding promotion of freedom rights that are at the core of what we want to stand for, especially freedom of speech and freedom of the press. This stage has seen bloggers denouncing political and societal injustices, news editors tried for confronting heads of government and state, professors who refused to give in to political pressure, fact checkers, organizations, and individual journalists who revealed the atrocities of human trafficking, organized crime, and of course, the war in Ukraine, with the immovable certainty that truth will out. Of the regions in the world, Latin America is the deadliest region for the press in 2022. 30 journalists were killed in the Latin American countries, accounting for nearly half of the 67 journalists and media workers killed worldwide. And this year's laureate, of course, will receive a prize for defending them. Welcome to this year's Freedom of Speech Award. As mentioned, and a very warm welcome also to everyone who is watching online, we are talking about a difficult region for journalists, which is also my region. I come from Costa Rica, not too far away from El Salvador in Central America, which ranked 115 of a total of 180 countries in this year's World Press Freedom Index. Amidst a hostile environment for journalists, one online newspaper, the first of its kind in Latin America, by the way, has become a beacon of hope for those still looking for a critical approach in a country where the government attacked and threatened journalists unwilling to align with its controversial policies. This year's laureate is the editor-in-chief of El Faro. Here is a first look at Oscar Martinez. Challenging the powerful and giving a voice to the powerless. That is why Oscar Martinez became a journalist. He is editor-in-chief of El Faro, the lighthouse. Latin America's first digital newspaper and a platform for independent journalism in El Salvador and the whole region. We believe that journalism must do two essential tasks. First, to watch over power and the powerful, reveal the dark corners of power and its control mechanism. The second is to make visible the lives of the most vulnerable people, of those who suffer from excessive power. And we believe that all this is more indispensable now that Central America is experiencing a new wave of authoritarianism. Martinez has documented the workings of El Salvador's notorious gangs and their gang leaders. But he also exposed extrajudicial killings by El Salvadoran police and government links to organized crime. His refusal to fall in line with the authorities has brought him up against El Salvador's president, Nayib Bukele. The young leader's war on criminal gangs has made him hugely popular with Salvadorans. Bukele promotes his hardline policies in slick promotional videos. But critics say gross human rights violations are being committed under his rule. And Oscar Martinez and his team revealed that Bukele has links to the very gangs he is fighting and that he made pacts with gang leaders for his own political ends. What would have happened if we had not revealed the police massacre, the political corruption, the pacts with criminals? I think it would have happened that the life of the corrupt would have been easier. And we don't want that. But taking on the powerful has also made Oscar Martinez's own life anything but easier. Under President Bukele, critical journalists like him have become a target. 
Martinez and the team of El Faro have been spied on by the government. He and his family have had to leave the country repeatedly for fear of being arrested. But despite the huge personal risks, Oscar Martinez is determined to keep on writing, to hold those in authority to account. Now, the struggles of the free press are, of course, not exclusive to El Salvador. Across Latin America, not only journalists, but all sorts of members of the civil society are under pressure if they dare to confront those in power. Now, few people at DW know Latin America like my next guest. As a journalist, as a news anchor, and as the host of her own interview show, Aquí Estoy, Pia Castro has traveled across the Latin American continent, or the American continent, rather, and talked to Latin Americans from all sorts and all works of life. Today, she's here for the laudatory speech. Please welcome Pia Castro. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to see people from all over the world here, or journalists uh, that have gathered together to pay tribute to a person. Um, he's a very brave man. This is, this is something that you're going to hear when his name is mentioned in Latin America. What a brave man. Oscar Martinez is also one of the most renowned journalists on my continent. He's one of the, of the few who can bring us closer to finding an explanation for the violence that exists in Central America, and especially in his country, El Salvador, which is deemed to be one of the most dangerous places in the world. Um, Oscar Martinez and his editorial team have made the online platform, El Faro, one of the pillars of investigative journalism throughout Latin America. Their investigations have brought the connections between the criminal gangs and the Salvadorian state into the light. And Martinez makes it very clear in his books, in his interviews, in his articles, it's not only about the gangs, it's not only about poverty, it's not only about inequality, it's not only about the consequences of a civil war that lasted 12 years, where more than 75,000 people were killed. It's not only about the militarism in the region, but also about the violence found in the very institutions of the state. Were it not for Oscar Martinez, we wouldn't know, for instance, about the secret agreement between the Bukele government and the Mara Salvatrucha, one of the most dangerous criminal organizations on the planet, ladies and gentlemen. El Faro, the online platform, has just marked its 25th anniversary, but there is no reason to celebrate, but rather a warning, as El Faro was compelled to move its administrative office from El Salvador to Costa Rica as a result of pressure from the government. Part of the Martinez family lives abroad. Several colleagues, many of whom are intimately acquainted with his work, had to leave the country due to credible threats against them. By undercovering wrongdoings and revealing the truth about their government to the people in El Salvador, Oscar Martinez has been labeled an enemy by President Bukele who wants to prevent the public from reading about human rights abuses by his government, the hidden power of the state, the ongoing emergency rule that is under the small screen of security, or the arbitrary detentions and the many prisoners who are not seeing a fair trial. Just to give you an idea, with this exception rule, 1.2% of the population of El Salvador is at the moment in jail. 
And still, and this is something we all have to know tonight, and I would like to repeat this because it's very important, the president enjoys incredible popularity in El Salvador. And journalists like Oscar Martinez are being detested by many, as he stated in a recent interview. Bukele has managed to control violence in El Salvador, but at what cost? A question that a large part of society doesn't want to hear and Martinez addresses. Bukele controls the media, the most important institutions, and has managed, despite constitutional ban, to be able to go for a re-election. We're talking about Central America, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends. Central America is a region where authoritarianism seems to be increasingly accepted. A large part of societies in this region will trade democracy for a quick fix of their lack of public security. There has been so much violence by gangs and organized crime in Central America that as a consequence, people more than ever want a feeling of peace no matter whether this peace comes with or without justice. There are very few people in my continent who can give you a deep picture of how these gangs work. Oscar Martinez is an authority on the criminal Mara gangs, having researched how they operate in Central America for more than 20 years, how they have recruited people, how they have constituted a second power and even a second government in some states with its own regime of rules and punishments. And while today the gangs are losing influence in El Salvador, we find that they are being replaced by the state mafia, writes Oscar Martinez. And he also sounds the alarm in a more international context about the figure of the strong man, the iron fist returning to Latin America. We have a name in Spanish for this man. They're mostly men. Caudillos, the caudillo, which includes figures ranging from Bolsonaro through Nicaragua's Daniel Ortega and El Salvador's Bukele. And now we have another situation, just very close, Guatemala. Guatemala seems to be going on that direction too. It's a neighbor country of Mexico, one of the most recognized newspapers in the country, in Guatemala. El Periódico had to close because of government persecution some months ago and the upcoming elections next week, in five, a few days, show candidates that celebrate the controversial measures of, measures of Bukele and candidates that want to be like Bukele. All these rulers are far from democracy and dislike its most essential features, such as checks and balances, the rule of law and due process. They are bothered by criticism and bothered when the dark and corrupt way in which they handle public affairs is revealed. We have to support courageous journalists through integrity has been able to counter the government's disinformation and propaganda through accurate journalism. And that is Oscar Martinez, accurate journalism. In countries where a mistake can cost you your very life, your job, your reputation, Oscar Martinez is synonymous with investigative journalism of the highest order, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bia. 
And you already mentioned it. We have to support courageous journalists. That's why we are here. The reason this award exists and the reason it is today handed to Oscar Martinez is part of DW's commitment to values like freedom and human rights, democracy and good governance, values that we also live up to in our own organization. Here to present this year's Freedom of Speech Award is our Director General. Please welcome Hitta Limburg. Well, first of all, thank you, Pia, for this really impressive speech. Thank you very, very much. And as you know, this Freedom of Speech Award is something which is very close to my heart because I think what makes the difference is that we can really shed light on situations, on crises, and we can really do something because we we reach a lot of people with this award, and so I think it's something where I'm honestly proud of that we have it. And so I'm really happy today to have another great man, we also had women, but we, this time we have a great man, to get this award. And as we heard, freedom of expression and opinion in El Salvador are in peril, which makes trustworthy journalism even more important. So it's my honor to present the DW Freedom of Speech Award to Oscar Martinez, the editor-in-chief of El Faro for the exemplary and courageous journalism he and his colleagues are producing despite the personal danger they experience. Oscar, please. Okay, first of all, uh, it's a huge honor to be here, and it's a little bit overwhelming, too. Uh, I have no words to, to, to say thank you, and, and I, it's literally, I have no words, at least not in English. So, <laughs> let me read my speech in Spanish. Uh, primero, uh, First and foremost, I would like to express my gratitude. Uh, I'm going to give you a few seconds to use your headphones. <laughs> okay, primero lo indispensable. First and foremost, I would like to express my gratitude. Gracias a la DW por Thanks to Deutsche Welle for awarding me this recognition in, estos tiempos, in these times of persecution in Central America. Es un honor it is an honor to receive it. Gracias a mi familia, Thanks to my family ser el for being the indestructible refuge ante los from the constant ataque. attacks. Gracias a Alejandra, Thanks to Alejandra, my partner, aquí, who accompanies me here today, in this happy moment, but who has been by my side in each of the nights of anxiety and days of anguish. I'm here to receive this recognition on behalf of the Central American Journalistic Guild to which I belong. I also receive it as a member of the newspaper El Faro, which for 25 years has been dedicated to explaining this troubled region of the world in which we live. Therefore, I'm here full of regret, but also full of pride, because I represent a group of people who have fulfilled their mission to inform, despite the fact that this has made their lives miserable at times. More than 150 journalists in Nicaragua were forced to leave their country due to harassment, imprisonment and torture imposed by the dictator Daniel Ortega. He forgot everything he fought for 
with the Sandinistas and turned into a tyrant even worse than the one he removed from power when he was still a revolutionary. Some of these journalists, when they were already outside the country, living in exile, were notified that the dictator had banished them, revoked their nationality, and confiscated all their assets in their home country. Some of the journalists left through clandestine points on the border at dawn, holding the hands of their young children to avoid falling into the clutches of the regime. Others left in boats and still cry when they remember the last time they looked back and saw the hills of their country. Some of them had to spend their first nights in exile on a park bench until they found the solidarity of other exiled people who helped them settle wherever possible. And yet, despite persecution, escape, exile, precariousness, fear and banishment, most of these journalists continue to investigate from afar, exposing the secret agreements and corruption of the dictator. I ask what great commitment drives these people who in the most distressing moments of their lives still follow their beliefs and practice journalism. The justice system in Guatemala is held hostage by groups that want to stop once and for all the possibility of holding the powerful accountable, those who committed massacres during the civil war, or those who plundered the state coffers as presidents or businessmen. The most emblematic journalist in the country, Jose Rubén Zamora, was sentenced just five days ago to six years in prison for money laundering after a trial with dozens of irregularities. Zamora had to change defense lawyers ten times either because they were threatened or accused of crimes related to their defense of Zamora. Justice is held hostage by the powerful in Guatemala. They used this trial to challenge the independent journalism. In the midst of this process, an investigation was ordered against nine other journalists and columnists accused of attacking with their publications the prosecutor's office. Today, more than 22 Guatemalan journalists are in exile. José Rubén Zamora continues to spend his days locked in a cell with hardly any ventilation or light with only one hour of daily release. Many journalists have fled because they know they are being targeted, but many more have stayed, even though they know they are on the enemy's list of those in power. They continue to work, investigate, and expose the truth, not only in the capital, but also in indigenous communities in the countryside, where, far from the spotlight and the cameras of international media, they confront large multinational corporations that have agreements with the government. I ask what radical calling makes them stay when power has already shown them that by doing their job, they can end up locked away for years in darkness. In Honduras, in Honduras, as a consequence, digital harassment, threats from those in power, surveillance and interventions seem nothing in a country where, in 2022 alone, three more journalists were murdered, according to the Inter-American Press Association. One of them was taken by force by individuals dressed as police officers. They gagged and executed him in the middle of the street in the capital. And yet dozens of journalists in the country continue to investigate the links between organized crime and the state, between organized crime and the private sector. What makes them get up every morning, say goodbye to their children, and go out to investigate in a country where doing so can cost you your life? El Salvador, 
where I come from and where I will return after receiving this award, is steadily heading towards becoming a full-fledged dictatorship. It is no longer a democracy. Some think tanks describe it as a hybrid regime that maintains some democratic facade but is essentially authoritarian. Journalists, in particular, were subject to 17 months of surveilling using Pegasus, and there has been no serious investigation into these actions. Alone in my news platform, El Faro, 22 individuals, including myself, were targeted when we were gathering evidence on the President's secret agreement with criminal gangs. Gag laws have been enacted that can imprison a journalist for up to 30 years for revealing information related to gangs or their agreements with those in power if a judge considers that such information causes a concern. But who defines what constitutes a concern? The judges of the regime. Just two weeks ago, the head of police said that they would go after journalists and soon, people will see us being tried and imprisoned. We have been living under emergency rule for more than a year now, which essentially allows any police officer or soldier to arrest and imprison anyone they consider suspicious. Dozens of these individuals have died in regime prisons, their bodies showing signs of torture. As numerous journalistic publications and reports from national and international organizations have already shown, torture has become a state policy. The words that haunted us during our 12-year civil war are resonating loudly. Exile, repression, political persecution, torture. All this structure is controlled by one man, the popular president Naib Bukele. A society deprived of peace processes once again believes that violence is the solution, and journalism is left in the middle, persecuted by those in power, despised by a large part of the society it informs. And yet, Salvadoran journalism had never exposed as many causes, ca cases of corruption, impunity and state violence as in this century. Why do all these journalists continue to investigate the almighty figure of El Salvador, knowing that any of them could end up imprisoned in deathly cells for several years? There will be nuances in each answer and different personal motivations in each colleague, but I'm sure that in general, the answer from the Central American Guild that I'm proud to belong to is one. Because in times of greater darkness, there is a greater need for journalism. That is what we believe, and we don't care if we are mistaken. My colleagues have shown that they understand their historic role. They didn't just talk about commitment and sacrifice while they were at a bar in El Salvador, Guatemala City, or Tegucigalpa. But they lived up to their beliefs when the tyrants returned. Even if it meant exile or jail, I believe and I ask all of you gathered here that a profession like ours deserves all the solidarity. Do not abandon us, for we will continue to report. Do not abandon us, for the powerful are coming after us. I want to close this speech with an emotionally charged message, rather than a profound one, so that it resonates as a vital cry, because we're burdened, but not defeated. To the courageous and incorruptible profession in the region, long live Central American journalism. To my colleagues at the newspaper, whom I have seen give up their peace of mind for years now, long live the journalism of El Faro. Silence is not an option. No matter what it costs, it is not our choice and will never be. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much to all of you for those impressive words, for the experiences that you shared, and of course, for the hard work that you do. That concludes the official conference program for today. It has been a great honor to join you and to be with you today. Uh, I then release you, of course, to uh, the non-conference program, which means a reception where we can all continue to share, uh, to discuss, and of course, also to enjoy. But while enjoying, and this is a little thought that I want to leave you with, let's not forget how lucky we are. We just heard how quickly things can change. So if we're here, if we're able to discuss, to come together, to share values, and to fight for them together, let's do that without forgetting how lucky we are. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much for your attention, and have a great, wonderful night. <laughs>